Hello, this is Andrew Prito with Hermes Medical, and I'm happy to get to show you today the use of our Hybrid Dose 2.0 program. This program is intended to streamline the processes of obtaining the residence time for each organ of interest to facilitate the MERT approved S factor dose calculations. The program requires at least three whole body planar images be loaded. The program will also accept a single spec or spec CT. The use of the SPECT is primarily to account for organ overlap, attenuation, background correction, and when coupled with the CT, the ability to define an organ based on physical dimensions rather than activity uptake. Here we have hybrid dose loaded with four whole body images acquired at one hour, one day, five days, and seven days after injection. Each time point has both anterior and posterior views. Also loaded is a spec CT that was imaged minutes after the completion of the one day whole body. The isotope used in this particular example is lutetium-177, but later we will see other isotopes that are already incorporated into the program. If you do not see your isotope, please let us know as we can incorporate even more. The program can accept many more time points in the whole body region. And while currently limited to a single spec, it can occur at any time in the timeline and does not have to be at a set time. Next thing we'll do is look at the first step, which will be alignment. If there is a spec or spec CT loaded, then your first step is to align that spec with the whole body images. The program will automatically select the whole body image that is acquired at the closest time to the spec acquisition and display it along with the projection of the spec for the purpose of alignment in this window right here. Upon loading, the whole body images have been aligned to each other automatically leaving us with only the alignment between the whole body and the spec projection to do. Select the alignment tool icon, click the manual option, and we'll be able to grab the projection and move it into a very rough alignment. We do a rough alignment only as the next step is to use our numerical method to do a registration between the two. Here we can see that's been completed. When we click OK, we will now use the mutual information of these two overlapped areas to correctly scale the spec and the whole bodies to each other so that the counts in one mean the same as the counts in the other. After this, we'll move on to the VOI drawing. So after we have completed the alignment phase, the next step is to draw our volumes of interest in the spec CT. We begin with the volumes of interest because moving over to the whole body and drawing the regions of interest in that specifies that we are finalizing our spec CTs of those organs. So the order does become important. We want to begin by choosing our ROI VOI tool now you'll notice that this page that we've just covered up a little is the whole body regions, the alignment, and a small portion devoted to spec CT as a fused image. There's another tab with spec CT that shows the spec in uh, TCS view, that's fused with CT as well, and then finally a MIP view of the spec. And it's because of this that I prefer to draw on this particular tab. The reason being that as I'm drawing some organ, I can actually see the extent of that in the MIP. You'll also see the extent of your VOI, and this will show you a, a good idea of just how much more you have to do. So I want to pick somewhere close to the top of the liver. And because of this, I'm not going to actually show you the entire drawing process, as after the first few slices, it's going to become very evident. Uh, we'll cut away for a second, and when we come back, all of them will be done. But let me show you the basics of how. There's a circle, a rectangle, a rubber band method, and finally freehand, which is what I'll be wanting to use. From the list, we'll choose what we're going to draw, and in this case, I'm, I'm choosing the liver here. I'll do this on the spec CT fused, and there's just a little chunk of liver here. Now, if we make a mistake, as I will 
leave a huge chunk of liver out here we have options to edit the ROI and we can just kind of pick it up at some point finish off the liver as we wanted and let go it fixes that so it's a very nice tool we could also of course delete the ROI completely if we wanted to redraw it we can uh, move it if uh, it was in the wrong spot and even copy it and move it to the next slice if that was actually appropriate so we have one slice of the liver I'll continue to draw just a couple of more to get to the next part that I want to share with you start to get that other lobe here alright uh, this is about where I'll cut away but before I do just to show you we can actually grab all of these regions at once and choose to create a VOI from the ROI not going to as when I do it'll preclude me from actually drawing the rest but we'll cut away now and when we come back I'll have all of the regions drawn and we'll proceed from there so now we skipped ahead a little bit and we're showing the volumes of interest as they're drawn there's the liver and one of the kidneys have the other kidney also visible in the MIP that they are drawn. Those are the only three organs which we've tr really defined and that comes from the fact that they are the only three organs which are truly visible in the whole body image. Now that's all that really does matter. The way the calculations are started is that we begin with for each image a total amount of activity in the whole image and then for each organ that we specify we subtract the amount that's in the area specified. The rest of the activity then is distributed throughout the rest of the remaining body in the S factor phantom. And so anything that has a relatively normal or, or equivalent to the rest of the body non-significant activity concentration will be treated with the activity concentration that's left. So we go into the free hand option we're going to define a few of the organs now one of the other things that's probably worth mentioning is that when we draw these different organs we'll try and get some liver here it really doesn't matter which one of these images you draw anything on you can move to do a, a liver in one uh, and a kidney in the other and there's no problem with that switching between posterior and anterior views also does not create an issue time points do not either the urinary bladder was not actually present inside of the original spec CT but it is available to us here in the whole body so just grab it and also include it and then when we're completed with drawing at least on one everything we want we just hit the copy ROI button and this will mere copy the VOIs to the alternate plane anterior posterior it will also copy it to all of the other images assuming that the alignment that was done to begin with was actually really good this should give us a pretty good but if we need to edit any of them of course still possible say I'll just cut that off there and so all of them can be actually defined separately after that's done we just close this window and the next thing we're ready for is the options with the all of the regions complete the next step is to go into the options phase and thus will lead directly into curve fitting so we'll do those together 
we can take all of the ROIs that we've potentially drawn and, and give them an attenuation factor and for some of them uh, that are not the standard even a background factor of course this is all ways to compensate for the fact that a two-dimensional whole body scan is nowhere near as complete of information as the spec CT is for being able to do attenuation corrections and uh, the actual amount of body thickness that those are covered in so these are factors which allow you to make up for that if all you're dealing with is two dimension as we've got a spec CT they're a little bit less useful the next page lets us choose our phantom this does happen to be a male and choose a weight for each of the organs these are the standard murd man at weights for all of the organs as they stand there's a tendency to people to take the multiply mass by and multiply the total weight in order to get the patient's weight and I urge you to reconsider this as largely what you're doing is multiplying all of the organs by a multiplicative factor when in fact most of the time it's the addition of extra muscle and adipose tissue which don't really affect the dosimetry that much that are actually causing the greatest gain in body weight and so we're artificially making the organs a lot larger when we do that I would potentially either change individual organs based on what you know from the volume and a known density or leave them as they are the last tab here is the activity tab this is where we can choose our different isotopes and as we know from earlier this is lutetium-177 you can see that we've got a very good start to many of the isotopes most commonly used as I stated earlier we can add more so if you don't see yours don't panic just let us know we can add that the next few choices are about how to use the standard since we haven't actually chosen any of the standard images in any of these it's going to eventually go down to this use pre-calculated factor and scale all of these to counts per second being the same efficiency so you'll want to use a standard in every image if you can't manage to use the same camera each time so you expect a different efficiency for each image you could use one image only if you really wanted to scale that to a, a known factor uh, but as what we're trying to get here is residence time or the assumption that everything goes back to the full amount injected the pre-calculated factor is sufficient if the patient had not voided before the first image we've got a paired organ area this is allows you to double the kidney or the lung activity the only reason for this is if the patient has postoperatively or through some other means lost a kidney or a lung these are doubled then because the MERD phantom expects two if you have only the kidney the left kidneys activity and you split that in the phantom across the left and right kidney it'll be half the concentration so what we do is we double that kidney activity we get uh, twi twice divided by two and we end up with the same activity concentration which of course is the important part the injection time was read from the header here and it seems to be accurate the activity we can change to whatever we'll call it two in this case this is a little bit less important because on the last page one of the things that we'll have is the dose per megabecquerel but then there will be another page where we do this scaled by the amount that we've injected too and that dose per megabecquerel will allow us to expect for a treatment dose what to get for each organ by a multiplicative factor for each each value it'll also allow us to basically acquire everything that we'd get by by choosing a value at this time so here's the warnings that we're going to get so the first one is that because we did not draw a region of interest for the total 
body. We'll use the total image counts in its place. The second one, as I stated earlier, is because we did not draw a standard ROI, we'll be using a, the pre-calculated factor, so the button would be placed there. And then once we close that window, the window will automatically open for the curve fitting. As you can see in the left kidney, we've got a little bit of uptake still occurring after the first time point. So what I'm going to do is skip the first time point and go straight to the last three. Now, because I've now only got three time points that I'm fitting, my fit type went from a bi-exponential to an exponential. There's just not enough points to do a bi-exponential fit. It's also worth mentioning in this case that we're numerically integrating from zero to the first time point to the uh, first time point that we're doing the fit on and then we'll be doing a analytical calculation from there. These two curves are the curves raw from the whole body and then this pink dot is the value from the spec and we've scaled the curve to fit that spec time point. We have to do all of the organs that we've defined so again we've got the liver in this case the attenuation correction is probably what's actually caused this to go up higher. Right kidney and all of these by the way uh, since that first left kidney fit a very good by exponential fit. Total body exactly the same and the urinary bladder contents also a very good fit. So this does after clicking OK the numerics should be following through and we have our results. Talking about them really quick we'll that button it'll open our page plus also kind of reformat the images on this page to make for a better screen capture. In the results we have our effective dose and for each organ a dose that was received. There's a quick drawing of the ROI on one of the images all meant for screen captures and sent to packs as a permanent record within one curve we've got one graph we've got all of the curves fit for all of the different regions we got the time for post activity injection the amount in the given organs and finally the fitting parameters which did the curve fitting graft here this would of course be ready to send directly to packs if you wish to as a screen grab you could also grab of course these images but this button here allows us to save the resulting file into an STP which if you are familiar with Olinda you'll know is the save file format for Olinda so you could take this file format after you've saved it load it directly into Olinda and it will pre-populate the model the isotope the residence time for all of the organs that we have and you should expect that when you run Olinda you'll get the exact same answer however as you did when you clicked this results page so I'm not going to save that but these values here in this screen those are the ones that you'd expect to get. All right. Well, that's the be that's how to use the Hybrid Dose 2.0 program. I hope you found it informative. If you have questions, please let us know. We'll be happy to answer what we can. Thank you and have a good day.